practice at this place called Ridge Rock, which is now a laundromat where Tom jumped through the wall and made a hole in the wall that we had to push a fucking board in front of to disguise this six foot hole in the wall. <laughs> Nothing was there, don't worry about that. Bago owned a skate shop called 911 Skates. We used to practice there. We, we practiced at this place called Josie's Nut Shop, which was in Franklin Square. In the middle of February, going into the cellar with these like frozen stairs that are like fucking 90 degree angle down. And Bago would be like parking the van or something and we'd accidentally drop like Bago's head down the stairs and we'd be like, don't tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> that happened a couple of times, sorry, Bago. Lucy, I got some splaining to do. They weren't what was, I guess, really kind of happening or popular. It, when they first were out there, they weren't 25 to life, they weren't bulldozed, they weren't mad ball. Some of the values that they held were a little bit more youth crew than Lower East Side crew. A lot of bands really tried to combine what, you know, Chokehold sounded like with what you know, quicksand was sounding like, and it just sounded like garbled shit. And Indecision, there's parts, you know, I listen to their records, and there's parts that I'm like, wow, that really sounds like this band, and that totally sounds like that band, and how the hell did they get that to work in one song? Most of the time, it was all of us in the same room writing, uh, you know, oh, I came with these riffs, or oh, I had this drum beat, if you want to put something over it. Everybody was pretty open to uh, changing what they were playing. Usually I'd, I'd have an idea in my head of what I wanted to do, but a lot of it came from jamming. I could plug in my amp and just start playing, and eventually next thing you know, it's like fucking Zit Remini on Degrassi Junior High. Everyone's like coming in like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. All right, we got a little jam going, guys. You know, it was really cheesy. And you had to have a thick skin because you were jamming and it's like, dude, that's garbage. So everyone always has their digs, like, oh, you always play that. You do this, or, but everyone's together writing the music. Very rarely did I come in with like, okay, you'll play this and you'll play that. Like, I didn't do that shit. I just, I wasn't talented. I'm not fucking Beethoven, you know? Justin did like the majority of, of all the songwriting. He did all the music as, as far as music goes. Um, as far as lyrics, he was the majority. He wrote the majority of the stuff. I used to just do this like automatic writing, just like blah, 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 blah. And I just like hand Tom like all these lyrics. And um, you know, a lot of times he would, he'd pick out stuff that he liked and he'd, you know, he'd format it and stuff. And you know, it was a lot more collaborative, collaborative than everyone thought, I think, or everyone liked to assume. Like him and I kind of worked together as far as like the placement and like melodies and stuff like that. It was kind of, it was a group effort. We all kind of did our own little thing. Everyone's together writing the music, and uh, and it gets more of a, a unique vibe instead of like I'm just gonna email you some riffs and I'll play drums over it, and then you know you have this sterile song. It's just everybody together writing. I think we honestly took more of like a pop approach almost to like the lyrics and stuff. Like we wanted this stuff to be really memorable. Like Undertow was great because their songs are really simple to play and really memorable and. You know, you could sing along to them, you could, you could identify with them, and catchy. And we always, we really tried to aim for that kind of thing, which was kind of like Partridge Family of us. They just had this ability to kind of take everything that was going on at the 90s and, and incorporate it into their sound in a way that didn't sound forced, it sounded completely natural, and it sounded genuine. And I think that was really hard. I think a lot of bands tried to do that and they couldn't do it. <laughs> 